Hi there. Today we are going to study non-plastic sedimentary rocks. First, let's know some examples of non-plastic sedimentary rocks such as carbonate limestone, dolomite rock, evaporites halite, and hydrite, gypsum and siliceous chert. Moreover, banded iron formations, phosphates and coal are also non-plastic sedimentary rocks. Now let's study these non-plastic sedimentary rocks in details. Limestone is a type of carbonate sedimentary rock which is composed mostly of the minerals calcite and aragonite, which are different crystal forms of calcium carbonate. About 10% of sedimentary rocks are limestones. The solubility of limestone in water and weak acid solutions leads to karst landscapes, in which water erodes the limestone over thousands to millions of years. Most cave systems are found in limestone bedrock. However, limestone has numerous uses such as it is used as a building material, an essential component of concrete. Besides that, limestone is also used as aggregate for the base of roads, as white pigment or filler in products such as toothpaste or paints, as a chemical feedstock for the production of lime, as a soil conditioner, and it is also used as a popular decorative addition to rock gardens. A closely related rock is dolomite. Dolomite is an anhydrous carbonate mineral composed of calcium magnesium carbonate. The term is also used for a sedimentary carbonate rock composed mostly of the mineral dolomite. An alternative name sometimes used for the dolomitic rock type is dilostin. The next examples of non-plastic sedimentary rock are evaporitic rock. Evaporite is the term for a water-soluble mineral sediment that results from concentration and crystallization by evaporation from an aqueous solution. There are two types of evaporite deposits, marine, which can also be described as ocean deposits, and non-marine, which are found in standing bodies of water such as lakes. Evaporites are considered sedimentary rocks and are formed by chemical sediments. For example, halite, which is commonly known as rock salt. It is a type of salt, the mineral form of sodium chloride. Halite forms isometric crystals. The mineral is typically colorless or white, but may also be variable colors depending on the inclusion of other materials, impurities, and structural or isotopic abnormalities in the crystals. Other examples are gypsum and anhydrite. Here, gypsum is a soft sulfate mineral composed of calcium sulfate dihydrate. It is widely mined and is used as a fertilizer. It is also used as the main constituent in many forms of plaster, blackboard or sidewalk chalk, and drywall. Anhydrite is in the orthorhombic crystal system, with three directions of perfect cleavage parallel to the three planes of symmetry. Our next non-plastic sedimentary rock is chert, which is a hard, fine-grained sedimentary rock composed of microcrystalline, or cryptocrystalline, crystals of quartz, the mineral form of silicon dioxide. Chert is characteristic of biological origin but may also occur inorganically as a chemical precipitate, or a diagenetic replacement, as in petrified wood. Chert is typically composed of the petrified remains of siliceous ooze, the biogenic sediment that covers large areas of the deep ocean flow, and which contains the silicon skeletal remains of diatoms, silicoflagellates, and radiolarians. Precambrian cherts are notable for the presence of fossil cyanobacteria. In addition to microfossils, chert occasionally contains macrofossils. However, some chert is devoid of any fossils. Now, let's discuss another non-plastic sedimentary rock which is banded iron formations, also known as banded ironstone formations or BIFs, are distinctive units of sedimentary rock consisting of alternating layers of iron oxides and iron poor chert. They can be up to several hundred meters in thickness and extend laterally for several hundred kilometers. Almost all of these formations are of Precambrian age and are thought to record the oxygenation of the Earth's oceans. Some of the Earth's oldest rock formations, which formed about 3,700 million years ago, are associated with banded iron formations. They were first discovered in northern Michigan. Banded iron formations account for more than 60% of global iron reserves and provide most of the iron ore presently mined. Most formations can be found in Australia, Brazil, Canada, India, Russia, South Africa, Ukraine, and the United States. Non-plastic phosphates are the naturally occurring form of the element phosphorus, found in many phosphate minerals. In mineralogy and geology, phosphate refers to a rock or ore containing phosphate icons. Inorganic phosphates are mined to obtain phosphorus for use in agriculture and industry. 
The largest global producer and exporter of phosphates is Morocco. Within North America, the largest deposits lie in the Bone Valley region of central Florida, the Soda Springs region of southeastern Idaho, and the coast of North Carolina. Smaller deposits are located in Montana, Tennessee, Georgia, and South Carolina. The small island nation of Nauru and its neighbor Banaba Island, which used to have massive phosphate deposits of the best quality, have been mined excessively. The last non-clastic sedimentary rock we are going to discuss today is coal. Coal is a combustible black or brownish black sedimentary rock, formed as rock strata called coal seams. Coal is mostly carbon with variable amounts of other elements, chiefly hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, and nitrogen. Coal is formed when dead plant matter decays into peat and is converted into coal by the heat and pressure of deep burial over millions of years. Vast deposits of coal originate in former wetlands, called coal forests, that covered much of the Earth's tropical land areas during the late Carboniferous, Pennsylvanian, and Permian times. However, many significant coal deposits are younger than this and originate from the Mesozoic and Cenozoic eras. Coal is classified into four main types, or ranks, anthracite, bituminous, subituminous, and lignite. The ranking depends on the types and amounts of carbon the coal contains and on the amount of heat energy the coal can produce. That's all for today. If this video seems helpful to you please like and subscribe Earth Detective and also visit our YouTube channel where we uploaded lot of videos based on earth science. We also organized the videos in playlists based on topics. Feel free to explore and suggest us what you want to learn from us. You can also check description for links of our social media, website for resources, PowerPoint file and further discussion. Thanks for watching.